Hello, my name is Philip Rutherford. I'm a 3L here at Chicago Kent College of Law, um, pursuing a public interest certificate. Um, basically, the legal problem that I had to work on stems from the Illinois, Vol well, let me take it a little bit back. The issue I had to work on was the Illinois Voluntary Acknowledgement of Paternity. Um, I worked with Illinois Legal Aid Online with Dana Nikitas, um, who was an awesome help um, kind of throughout this entire process. So the best way to, and this is Illinois Legal Aid, um, and this is their mission statement. Essentially, they're, as most of you know, they're an organization that helps to um, increase access to justice for lower-income peoples, primarily through the use of technology, i.e. things like A to J and how that So basically, the way I thought about my um, legal problem was trying to answer this question. What happens to a child who grows up without a father? And I mean, there are any number of things that could happen, but uh, just a couple of um, I guess examples in their home life, children that grow up without fathers are at a greater risk of alcohol and drug abuse, greater risk of suicide, more susceptible to sexual abuse, and tend to engage in sexual behaviors younger, as well as they lack a, you know, a really, really broad um, economic, you know, support base. In terms of what that looks for them legally, um, you think about how those rights intersect with uh, the rights of their parents. So essentially, Children without fathers, those fathers have no legal rights um, over their kids, and the child can essentially be adopted um, if the father is not registered on the putative father's registry. The child can be adopted without his permission or consent. And the child does not automatically um, obtain the benefits um, that most children get, like inheritance and other, like if your, fa if your father dies and his job pays out some type of uh, like survivorship benefit, legal children are entitled. So the state kind of being mindful of all of that has decided that it is the policy of this state that every child um, has the right to physical, mental, emotional, and monetary support from their parents. And this is the um, statute that provides for that. So essentially, how does the state's paternity laws advance that policy? Um, there are three ways to establish paternity um, in Illinois. One is by um, presumption, which is essentially um, if you are married to someone and you have a child, the law presumes that that child is yours. Um, you could have it adjudicated, so a uh, court order could say this is your child. Or the third and most easiest way is by consent. So essentially, the voluntary acknowledgement of paternity, the paternity deals with what happens when um, a parent consents. So it's the easiest way, and again, this is the reference, uh, the citation to the statute that allows paternity, paternity to be established that way. So after kind of the initial looking through um, the statute and kind of reading it over, because a lot of the statute's parts um, reference, it's a pretty large document, and a lot of the parts seem to reference other parts of it. So I made sure I got the statute printed out and went through it first. And then I know that I needed the forms. So I Googled for the Illinois Voluntary Acknowledgement of Paternity, and I got a couple of forms. Um, the type of information they wanted to collect is all the same. The difference is that some of the forms do a better job of outlining some of the new laws and legal obligations that are created by filling these forms out. So then what I tried to do is essentially these are the pertinent parts of um, that form. So if you can see, it's just asking for the child's name, some information about where they were born, including the hospital, their gender, um, or I'm sorry, their sex. You've got the father's name and the mother's name um, as well and the same type of information. One of the things, though, in my interview, that this question about whether or not the mother was married actually triggers another form. Um, so that was something that I had to also go out and find, and that was the Illinois Denial of Paternity. And if you look at it, it's essentially the same type of information, except it's asking for date of marriage and information about a third person at this point. Um, after I got both of those forms, I actually wrote out um, every single um, uh, question um, essentially that they were asking what type of information they were asking for and then from this I actually assigned the variables and after we did some more A to J training I realized that some of the questions that were asking for like first name middle name last name in my mind when I had originally storyboarded were three separate questions and knowing that some of these uh, variables can actually be collected all with one question actually helped me redo uh, my story so that's where I went with it after realizing that I needed um, kind of the information itself that I needed, I plugged those, um, those questions or these questions essentially into um, another storyboard form and then had to think about, you know, 
what about the important stuff? So the important stuff was on the first form, and like I said, they assume, obviously, that if someone's filling this out, they're reading it. And these are kind of these new rights and obligations that are created, things you give up um, by going ahead and filling out this form. So I wanted to make, it sh make sure that the, um, the people filling it out, specifically the father, understands kind of the importance of what he's filling out. So how did I deal with this? I think what I ended up doing, um, and I'll actually walk through my interview, is I made the, the name questions, the birthday, those kinds of questions, those are really simple, up, the fr um, up front kind of information gathering. But I tried to make it so that before you could actually get the forms, you had to physically click through uh, the best summation of each of these. So even if you don't read it, you had to click through it to get onto the next one. So this is the standard A to J. All right. So some of the experience I got, I guess, to do this project was actually doing some volunteer work at the self-help uh, web center. And one of the things that I noticed working there is that there are some times where it seems like the person either just wants to get this thing done, or there are people waiting, and there's only one person to help three or four people with some complex issues. So I tried to think of a way that I could help um, an individual person who was not a pro se litigant um, quick fill these forms so that you can kind of get, gather the information, fill it out, and be done with that. So I tried to bury that kind of feature more or less in a legal aid so that you wouldn't inadvertently click on um, something like that. So you can click that you are a legal aid provider and it asks you if you'd like to essentially quick fill the information. And you can click through the screens. It's essentially just those, the text, the, the boxes. Um, in no real, yeah, in a logical form, I guess. And then again, this this issue with whether or not the mother was married is something else I tried to be um, aware about. So there is this way to fill out both the um, voluntary acceptance of paternity as well as the denial of paternity by kind of just quick filling um, it from this end. So another thing that I tried to think of, and when I was actually talking to Dina, is whether or not um, we wanted to do a Spanish version of this um, interview. The forms are available online in Spanish, however, they cannot be filed in Spanish uh, because they're not legal forms. So I was trying to think about how I essentially built the interview, uh, being mindful of the fact that I was going to have to mirror all of the steps and processes in a different language on the other end. Come to find out, I actually have a much easier way of um, doing that. It's just going to be in um, the kind of like learn more boxes. The Spanish translation will come up um, that way instead. I pre-filled a lot of these. So then I also kind of wanted, I know that this deals specifically with voluntary acknowledgement of paternity, but I kind of wanted the, the user very quickly to, to get a sense of what even paternity was was about, what they were talking about. So I tried to talk about what it is and then define it um, legally. And then I kind of talked about uh, previewing the, the fact that these are new things and rights and responsibilities that you will have to um, take on. And then right here I decided, well, there was still information, I think some really helpful information that I found through the research network in my memo that I wanted to communicate. So I gave the user the option to continue on kind of this, this lesson and learn more about paternity and what this form does and blah, 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 or just continue directly into um, the interview. And then at which point you'd have to select whether or not you were the child's mother or father. I'm just gonna skip through um, the answers. And then this I gave the, um, whichever parent was filling it out, I gave them the option to enter the other parent's um, information as well. Um, so there's that. All right, and now this is the, the question that asks about whether or not the, um, the mother was married at the time the child was born or conceived. And at first I tried 
to kind of write this in not so much a legal way, but you know, I guess I tried to write it kind of thinking about how like the statute looks and how the, the question looks, and I was actually the suggestion I got was why not just make it more personal um, towards the people you're talking about? So that's like Anita and. Um, there's a couple other ones I changed. I had to go back and change so it actually used you know, one of the variables and called the person by name, which I thought was a much more effective way of doing that. It let me do it in a question instead of a longer advice. <coughs> yes kind of takes you to the introduction about the denial of paternity and asks you whether or not you've got that information on your husband or ex-husband and would like to fill it out. Yes, you can enter it. or. You could not enter it, which will take you to the end, or you can just enter it up. And then this is the kids' information. Sex, birthday, <coughs> hospital. All right, and these these are some markers I put in there because I wasn't sure where the Spanish interview would have kicked back in, but now that I know. So then here is the thing on that form about the what about the important stuff that had kind of this is what I'm signing. I made each of those um, bullet points kind of a separate question that had to be clicked through to at least have the person read um, the things that were signed. And it talks about witnesses and there's a special situation with minors as well, um, but that is So this is what the forms look like, again, and then here's the form in Spanish, and then if it is test assembled, this has to be uh, changed, but you'll notice that all the fields um, are filled in, and because the mother was married, as indicated on the form, the denial of paternity form is also attached with all the relevant information. Yes? I don't want to interrupt if you don't know. That's done. So <laughs> one suggestion, or one, I, I guess, thing to talk about a little bit is you have this series of things that you want people to understand, right? But what if one of them causes them a problem? Don't sign it. How do they know that? I mean, what, I mean, they don't have, I mean, basically you're only saying continue is your only option, right? Oh, okay. All right. So, so, you, so you might have some way either alert or what do I do if I don't like this or what if I don't, you know, some, some other avenue for that person to act in a different way than just pushing through with the continue. Right? Yes. Seems to me. Um, can you show us this, this Spanish? Um, learn more, did you do that? Not yet. Oh, this yeah, was, not yet. Okay. yeah, this was very. But, you know, but the technique is, is clear in that. So it just shows up in the learn more as a parallel. It'll, to yep, it'll just be, it'll just say uh, Espanol, and then you just click on it, and then the Spanish okay. translation of the So it's side by side. Yeah, if you want to do it in a pop up. It's a pop up. That's the way that. Or a pop up. Because then it's only one interview to maintain instead of two separate yeah, it's one. It's a wonderful technique that we just sort of stumbled on. Uh, somebody yeah. in New York figured that out a couple years ago. But, um, I'll think of his name in a minute. Um, so I hope you'll be able to, you know, think about making that happen. So yes. Um, Sorry, I have a quick suggestion. Yes. So the where were you born? It's a city and state. But what if maybe account for if the parents weren't born in those states? I thought I, you, I thought about that, but then I tried to say. Um, the, the issue is, I tried to stay as close to the forms as possible because the forms don't make, and even there was a question about whether or not to use gender or sex, and the form specifically said sex, so I was like, besides you know, all the gender identity and all those things, this is, I'm just gonna try to stay as true to the form. Um, the form didn't seem to make a, a way to address that issue, and then the issue with the doing it in A to J is that from the states list, you have to pick, obviously, one of these states. Um, if it was a way that you could write in whatever city and just use a different blank for you know, state or country, um, I think that would address that problem. I couldn't figure out how to 
do it otherwise that was not from the drop down. Do you make state mandatory? All the questions are mandatory. Okay. Which I, again is another thing because I'm trying to think about whether or not, say the mother's filling it out and doesn't have all of the father's information, like should I allow her to continue to skip through the questions and partially fill and then handwrite or should it, you know, kick you out of the interview um, for anything you can't answer, I guess. Well, you, get, you just have to talk to Dina, I, I assume, about what she wants to do about the population of folks who um, may or may not have been born in the United States. Good. And you probably want to talk to her about the mandatory all questions as well. Yeah, Maybe class. all questions, just oh, all that questions. she might want to be able, like have people be able to fill out just they don't know the father's exact street address, but they know he lives in Chicago, so they can fill That's that part in. Yeah. yeah. And okay. then they can always handwrite things in later. All right. That is the 